All right, there you go. Hopefully you guys can see the screen that says example one. Uh, and we can then go ahead and basically read the problem. Uh, and I'm gonna, you know, always ask you guys questions, you know, um, hopefully you guys will be more active and you know, we'll solve them together. All right, so let's see what we have. It says at the starting gun, um, a runner accelerates at 1.9 meter per second square or 5.2 seconds. The runner's acceleration is zero for the rest of the race. What is the speed of the runner at t equals two seconds and also at the end of the race? All right. So one thing you wanna, I guess, identify when you're looking at a problem like this is what type of problem is this? Is this one dimensional kinematics? Is this two dimensional kinematics? Is this, let's say, um, Newton laws of motion, right? Is it, is it basically Newtonian dynamics? Are there forces involved? So what do you guys think? Who can help me here? What type of problem is this? How would you categorize this problem? The kinematics problem? Kinematic. Yeah, is it one dimensional or two dimensional? One dimensional. One dimensional. One. Exactly, one dimensional, which means what we have here is, um, I like to do always a rough sketch. So let's say this is the, the race going from point A, to, uh, to the end. But here's the thing, we have two parts because it says that uh, it starts from the uh, from rest, right? At let's say position A. Um, it, then, it then accelerates for 1.9 meter per second square, but it accelerates for 5.2 seconds. Uh, and after that, it, its acceleration is zero, which means whatever speed it has at the end of the 5.2 seconds, it's gonna then move at that speed the entire time. That means in a way we have three points of interest. Point A to point B, um, then from point B to point C. All right, now what I have here is from A to B, then there's an acceleration. There's an acceleration, which is equals to 1.9 meter per second squared. So our runner going from A to B, basically accelerates. So let's make this, let's say here's a runner, I'm gonna make it up as a particle. That means going from, you know, where velocity at A is zero, because they, it's, you know, it starts from rest, you can see, right? Um, starting at gun, that means you, you start from, the, from rest and you start accelerating. Then you're gonna to go to get to position B. Um, now it's gonna continue moving from B to C, but the idea here is that it, there are no longer acceleration. So I can say that, this is, this is acceleration from the, for the first segment. So let's say this is first segment. And then this is the second segment where there is no acceleration. So I can say that for the second segment, acceleration is zero. But then there is a motion at the constant velocity from B to C. Now, the idea here is you always like to write down the information that is given to you. So like, let's say, uh, read the problem one time entirely and then read it a second time and then start writing down what's given to you. Some of the things, you know, some of the information can be given to you directly, some of them indirectly. So for example, right now we are told that directly, you're gonna have objects starting from rest and that means initial velocity at A equals zero, then it's gonna accelerate. So, and we know that, you know, there's two segments, right? So accelerate, that means acceleration one from A to B is 1.9 meter per second square. And so technically then there's acceleration. So this acceleration, that means time from A to B is equals to 5.2 seconds. That means you have time from A to B equals 5.2 seconds. All right, so um, in a way there's no other information given to you at this point. But what you're told here is um, you, 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 you are asked to find you know, the speed, basically velocity, when time is equals to two seconds. So what is that velocity, basically? So we wanna calculate velocity when time is equal to two seconds. Now, what do you guys think? Uh, is this the velocity during the first segment of the motion or the second segment? The first segment. The first. The first segment, right? Because we know that we are in this first segment where we are accelerating 
for 5.2 seconds. There's a 5.2 seconds. So the two seconds is less than 5.2 seconds. That means this is, you know, when you're probably somewhere still over here and you are accelerating. And once we know that, that means we can say that this is, this is still from A to B, where I have acceleration, I start from rest, and then I have time, which is two seconds, then I can, you know, solve for the velocity at this. Let's call this some, I don't know, position D. That's, that means, you know, we are looking at, you know, position D. That means we're going from A to D, which falls within this segment from A to B. Now, the important thing here about this is that you do have an acceleration. That means there's an acceleration of 1.9 meter per second square. You know that you are at rest. You know, you start from rest at position A, and then you travel for two seconds. So you have acceleration, you have initial velocity, you have time, and you want to find the speed at this position B. So since you identified this to be, you know, one-dimensional kinematics, um, that means you want to know, okay, so which of those equations I can use to solve for that? Remember, when, it's, when, when you identify the type of problem, then you can kind of go and look at the formulas that deals with those type of problems. And remember, we have acceleration. We're assuming it's a constant acceleration. You have four equations. Equation one, V final equals V initial plus A times T. Equation two, delta X equals V initial time plus one half A T squared. Equation three, V final square equals V initial square plus two times acceleration times displacement. And then final equation four, displacement equals V initial plus V final divided by two, that is whole and time. So these are the equations for one dimensional kinematics with constant acceleration. Remember, this is a requirement. You need to have a constant acceleration. And this is one of those classes where I usually, if I, if I give you acceleration, it's constant. So more or less, you don't have to worry about that. So now, which of these equations I can use to find the velocity at when time equals two seconds? First one. First one. See, there's also equation three right there giving me velocity final. Can I use that? I, know, I, I see some of you shaking. Head. Why? Why not? Why can't I use that? Total displacement of or where he ended up. Basically. Exactly. We don't know what is the displacement, right, from A to D. We don't know what it is. So, I mean, I have two unknowns. Exactly. Equation one is simple one. It doesn't care what's the distance between A and D. It just says that I can calculate final velocity because all I need is initial velocity, which is zero. I need acceleration, which is 1.9 meter per second square, and I need time, which is two seconds. So plugging those together, then I can get 1.9 times two. I get 3.8 meters per second. There you go. That means I can just use equation one, the simplest one, to calculate the final velocity. All right, now, what we want to know, though, uh, what is the speed when it reaches this position C? What is the speed? That means the speed at the at basically at the very end. Okay. Now, see, there's a problem right now. Seems to be with uh, with this uh, calculating the velocity at point C, because we don't know what is the distance between A B or A C. Well, technically, at this point, we can calculate, right? We can calculate a lot of things about A to B because we have the time, we have the acceleration and things like that. But I don't know how long it's moving from B to C. I don't know how long it's moving. But here's the thing. What, what did I say about the second segment? There is no acceleration over there. Now, what does it mean? It means velocity that I want to calculate, which is at C, right? It's same as anywhere between B and C, including B. Why? Because there is no acceleration from B to C, right? That means velocity doesn't change. That means all at this point, all I have to do is calculate what is the speed at point B. And that's exactly the same speed at point C. 
Now, how do I calculate speed at point B? Do I have all the information that I need? What do you guys think? You would do the exact thing that you did before, but instead of at two seconds, you would use 5.2? Perfect, exactly. Because at this point, again, those are good equations, but I don't need any of these equations again because I want speed um, without really needing the displacement. I could do like two steps. I can calculate displacement and then use other equations, um, but I don't need to right now. All I have to do is just go back, same equation and do the same thing. Zero plus acceleration times time, but this time acceleration happens for 5.2 seconds. So then this will give me the you know higher speed because I accelerate you know, um, for 5.2 seconds. So 1.9 times 5.2, that's it. So it's 9.88 meters per second. Excellent, yeah, that's it. Because what happens here after we reach point B and moving at the 9.88 meter per second, the, uh, you know, the runner stops accelerating. So it moves at the same speed all the way until C. Go ahead, Tara. Um, this is just a quick question regarding the sig figs. Wouldn't it be 9.9? .9? It will be, yes. Okay, I just, I have to always like remind myself, don't forget about sig figs. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah, you are absolutely correct because I, oh, you know, I have two sig figs, two sig figs for all the values. So yes, I have to do that. All right. Okay, so that this is, you know, as you can see, right, this is this problem over here, which kind of, you know, gives you in terms of, if you have a speed somewhere and then you don't accelerate, that means you have that speed all the way, you know, until let's say you reach the end. All right, so let's look at another example. Um, a car is traveling due north at 23.6 meter per second. Um, find the velocity of the car after 7.1 second if, it if its acceleration is 1.3 meter per second squared due north. So, and then second part is something different. That means what we have is this, you have a car moving, so velocity, um, initial velocity is 23.6 meter per second. See, I, because it's north, I can then put y hat, right? So then we know that's in a positive y direction. Kind of, we can kind of do like coordinate system like this. Yeah. Now, then what we have here is, um, let's say what's given to us. We also know that uh, it's gonna travel for 7.1 seconds. Um, and then we are told for part A to take acceleration to be 1.3 meters per second square due north, so also y hat, okay? Now, then what we wanna find is basically the speed um, for this part A when you have these conditions, basically starting with the 23.6 meter per second velocity north, traveling for 7.1 second with this acceleration, which is also 1.3 meter per second you know, north, what will be final velocity? That means final velocity is unknown. And we can see, right? There is no information about displacement, but we have initial velocity, we have the time, we have the acceleration, and then we can again use the equation one kinematics, which is V final equals V initial plus AT. Now this for part A, then we say that V final equals 23.6 meter per second, because, right, because this is Y hat, then plus acceleration, which is 1.3 meter per second square Y hat, then times 7.1 second, one zero second. All right, I need to be true to the six weeks too. So sorry about that, 7.10 seconds. So then we can calculate that. All right, so that means 23.6 plus 1.3 times 7.1. All right, so I get 32.8 meters per second, y hat direction. So, what it means here is, remember, right? You're given velocity north, and then you're told that acceleration is also north. So hopefully you guys remember, right? If the velocity and acceleration have the same sign, 
as vectors pointing in the same direction, what happens here, you speed up. That's why you can see our speed is increasing if you are moving north and accelerating also in the north direction. Part B then says that, well, why don't you take for part B, acceleration as 1.15 meter per second squared to south. Now, how do I represent that? So it's gonna be 1.15 meter per second squared. How do I represent that? Would it negative. just be negative? Exactly, negative y hat, right? There you go. So then we can say, all right, so then v final equals v initial plus a times time. So then this will be 23 meters per second y hat, but then minus 1.15 meter per second square times 7.10 seconds. Sorry, 23.6. All right, so then we can calculate. So 23.6 minus 1.15 times 7.1. Well, we get 15.4 meters per second y hat. And this just demonstrates that if velocity is positive, this is in the y direction, right? So vertical velocity positive, but the vertical acceleration is negative. The consequence is we slow down. And that's what happens. All right, any question on this problem? All right, so let's look at something else. You are driving through town at 12 meters per second when suddenly a ball rolls out in front of you. You apply the brakes and begin decelerating at 3.5 meters per second square. How far do you travel before stopping? And then find the speed of your car when you have traveled half the distance in part A. Right. Um, all right, so again, um, we hopefully, you recognize that this is, you know, one dimensional kinematics, um, because again, we're just moving, you know, in one, one direction, right? So the idea here is this, so let's say. So we have speeding and then we stop, right? Yeah, so for this one, basically this, so let's say this is the object. So object is moving initially, right? So you have, let's say the car. So it has an initial velocity of 12 meters per second x hat. And then it says you apply the brakes and begin decelerating. So, so your acceleration then given as 3.5 meter per second square. But when it says decelerating, what does it mean? Negative 3.5. Exactly, negative. That means you are slowing down, right? This is just pretty much the indirect way of saying that you're definitely gonna slow down and you can only slow down if your acceleration is an opposite sign of your velocity. So if I take velocity to be to the right, acceleration then will be to the left as a vector. So it will be negative. All right, so, um, so that's what we have. And it says that, um, how far do we travel before stopping? So what does it mean as, as, as information? What, what information does it give us? How fast you... No, it says how far. We are want to look at how far, but it says before stopping. So what does that mean? Before st so we want to find how far, which means distance. But what happens at the end? We're looking for final uh, distance when velocity is zero. Velocity is zero. How do we know that again? Because it says when the car stopped. Exactly. That's a key, right? If you know, you have to understand where it says travel before stopping. That means, you know, how far do you travel until you stop, basically. That means if I take this as my point A, and when I get to point B, the car will have no velocity. That means the final velocity will be zero. Okay. And I want to know, what is this displacement between points A and B? Okay. Again, that's very important information there. And we want to know, let's say, right, so let's write that down, given. So we are given that initial velocity is 12 meters per second. We're given acceleration as negative 3.5 meter per second square. And we're given that final velocity at this point is zero. Let's say this is for this part, right? Going from 
A to B and B is a final position for me and it's zero. So what, what, what I wanna find here is displacement. What is displacement? Now, again, one dimensional kinematic problem because we can assume that this guy here is constant. So then we go and again, look at equation. D final equals B initial plus AT. Equation two, delta X equals V initial time plus one half AT square. Equation three, V final square equals V initial square plus two times acceleration times delta X. Equation four, delta X equals V initial plus V final that divided by two times time. All right, so um, then how do I solve for the delta X? Which equation will give me delta X taking into, into account what I'm given? I'm given initial velocity, the third one. acceleration, and final velocity. Sorry, somebody said third one, right? That is actually correct, exactly. That means what you want to do here, you want to have one equation that solves the problem directly. You know, uh, there are a couple of ways we can solve this problem, actually. I can, I can use, for example, equation one, solve for the time, then plug it into equation two or four and solve for the displacement. But equation three directly gives me that. Because remember, what I have here is I have initial final velocities and acceleration, but I don't have the time. I don't know how long it takes until it stops. But equation three is time independent. It doesn't need time. And I can use that. It says equation three again, V final square equals V initial square plus two times acceleration times delta X. See, I have everything because this is zero, right? I have then zero equals initial velocity is 12 meter per second square. Then plus two times acceleration, which is negative 3.5 meter per second square, then times delta x. As you can see, right, I have everything except delta x, and then we can go ahead and solve for that. So basically to do that, we rearrange, move this two times negative 3.5 times delta x to the left. So, you know, rearrange size. So two times three negative, uh, or thing like this. So this, you know, this two times negative 3.5 will give me negative seven. And then if I move it to the left, it becomes seven times delta x equals 12 meter per second square. Then just divide both sides by seven. So that means 12 square divided by seven will give me All right, I get 20.5 uh, 20 okay so technically then I can in a way write it as 21 keep it two sig figs because 3.5 is two sig figs um, so either way is okay so you can say 20.6 or just round it to two sig figs so 21 meters That means using equation three, we were able to just solve for the displacement in just one step. All right, so part A is done. So let's look at part B. It says, find the speed of your car when you have traveled half the distance in part A. That means what we're doing here, we kind of, you know, I don't know, like reversing everything back. That means we're just, we're saying, okay, so let's say right now we know what MB, which is let's say 21 meters. And then we're gonna say, all right, so let's go back and assume that you know we start from A with the same speed, with the same acceleration, but instead of traveling 21 meters, we travel half of that, which is, I don't know, let's say 10.5, right? Let's say 10.5 meters. Let's call this point C, right? That means now we're looking going from A to C. Um, okay, so we don't need this anymore. And what I can do here is this. Uh, what I had for, remember, for, for the part A, I assumed that when we reach our final destination, the, the car stops. But is the same thing true right now for part B? No. It's not, exactly. Because, you know, we know that it's gonna travel, you know, double that distance until it stops. 
So what I have here is, um, I don't know, let's say what's the speed is at point C, but it's definitely not zero. Okay. But I also don't have the time. But what I have right now, let me kind of rearrange this. I still have the same acceleration. I still have the same initial velocity. But now what I also have is the distance, right? I know between distance from A to C is 10.5 meters. That means now I have those three information and I want to find what is the speed. Again, going back to equation one, two, three, and four, which one of them will give me the answer? The third one again. Excellent, exactly. The third one again. Since again, see equation one, two, four need time. And I have absolutely no information about time, but I don't need to because equation three takes care of that. The final speed square equals initial speed square plus two times acceleration times delta x. And I have everything. Well, Square both sides. Square both sides. V final comes out from the left side. On the right side, I cannot take that out of square root because I'm two terms adding, but I don't need to. So it's 12 meters per second square plus two times negative 3.5, then times. Um, 10.5 meters, there you go. So then plug in everything, calculate, and we should get the final. Let's see, 12 square plus two times, or you know, minus technically, minus 3.5 times 10.5. I did everything correctly. I eight point four meters per second. There you go. So that's welcome to do the cat. All right. Any questions? All right, so let's con 